Hi everyone, and welcome to another session of Drop and Drawing. In this virtual sketching program, we're bringing the Met to you with a series of drawing exercises that are meant to challenge and grow your creative skills. My name is Leslie Ware, and I am the author of several activity books about sewing, fashion, and style for youth. I'm also a teaching artist here at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. We hope these classes will help you to be a little more creative while we're all stuck inside a bit more than usual. My workshop will focus on fashion sketching, including how to draw a croquis, which is a French word for sketch, which is often used to refer to the fashion figure. This word is from the 1800s. Fashion designers use sketches to communicate their design ideas. You don't have to be an expert at drawing or sketching to communicate in this way. You just need to know the basics. And remember, the more you practice, the better you'll become. There's lots of ways to approach this exercise. I like to keep things simple. In this video, we are going to take our inspiration from the Costume Institute's Open Access Collection. Let's start with our inspiration for today. This dress is from the Met Collection and was made in 1861 and would typically be worn by a woman during the day. It is an American design made from purple silk with symbols that look like hashtags or number sign patterns that repeats itself in varying sizes. This garment can be classified as a Civil War era dress. These dresses tend to not be less extravagant, which is what you might expect during a turbulent time of war. Yards of fine fabric, in this case, a vibrant purple silk and dark purple ribbon were used in this design. When I look at the dress from top to bottom, I see a full length garment with a simple bodice that goes into a V-shape at the waistline where it connects to the skirt. The bodice has a series of 12 small buttons that go down the center front. The buttons stop just before the bottom of the V at the waistline. This dress does not have a collar and is a basic scoop neckline. The sleeves bell out creating a very wide opening where the wrist might fall. It appears that the inner sleeve is lined with a smooth white fabric that is also likely silk. The skirt of the dress is very full with some light pleating. It comes all the way down to the ground and would likely cover the wearer's ankles and shoes. The outline or shape it makes might be considered a ball gown silhouette today. The dress has a darker purple trim at the hem that goes all the way around. This detail looks to measure about one third of an inch. The dress has a golden colored slip or petticoat underneath that peeks out just a little bit. The repeating pattern seems to be made from deep purple, likely velvet fabric strips that are sewn together to create the number sign. They could also be described as tic-tac-toe boards. The symbols vary in size from about two inch squares on the top part of the dress to probably four to five inch squares on the lower front and back hem of the dress and they are tilted on a slight angle. The front bodice of the dress has four hash symbols on each sleeve and four smaller hash signs on the bodice, two on each half on op opposite sides of the buttons. The skirt has six hash signs, the same size as the ones that are on the sleeve. They are evenly placed moving from the bottom of the skirt in the direction of the point. There are three on each side and they stop mid hip. We will be using this unique dress as a guide, but you are welcome to use whatever you would like to draw. Just make sure it's something you're excited about. Let's get started by gathering our materials. Now we are going to draw our croquis. The croquis that we are going to draw is based off of the seven head fashion figure and it is from my book, My Fab Fashion Style File. For this part, you will need paper, 
a pencil eraser, your sharpener, and a straight edge. The first thing I'm going to do is draw a head, and the head is kind of like an upside down almond or like a little upside down egg. The next thing I'm going to do is rip off a little piece of paper and I'm going to make a ruler using the paper so that I can mark off the heads as I move throughout making the croquis. And I'm also going to mark the halfway point and then the quarter point. Now I'm going to use my ruler to draw a straight line along the top so that I make sure that I have everything lined up properly. And then I'm going to mark seven heads going down using my ruler that I just made. The first time you do this, please do not worry about it being pretty. It doesn't have to be perfect as you continue to draw croquis, like you can refine them and make them better and better and better. Drawing, I'm finding, about, finding out is just all about letting go of the fear of messing up and just trying. I'm not the best drawer at all, but like I, well, at least try, and I notice that I'm getting better and better the more that I keep at it. So you're going to draw a line at the bottom. So I'm putting a line along the bottom, and this is where your the feet will be on your croquis. And then you'll draw a line down the center using your straight head, or your straight edge. <laughs> so you're going to draw a line through the head using your straight edge, and this will make sure that the croquis is balanced. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the neck, and then I'm going to use the ruler that I just made, and I am going to create the shoulder, or the shoulders. And the shoulder width is about one and a half heads, so you can use your little ruler to help you draw those marks for one and a half heads and I like to just draw like a little dot and then you can connect them and the shoulders should be falling probably at about right at one and a half so after you draw your shoulders the next thing we're going to do is draw little dots for the kind of like apex or the bust line and that should be right at around two. And if you want, you can like leave it flat or you can put little curves. I like to curve it because it just helps me to know how much to draw in. And then we're going to come down and we are going to create the waist on your croquis. And that should stop at about three or like a little past the three head mark. Once you get it to a point that you're okay with, we're going to go up and we're going to start to work on the arms. So I am drawing the top part of the arm now. And then I'm also going to kind of draw in where the elbow would be. And so the elbow will probably fall at about three, like maybe a tad bit above the three head mark. And so if you wanna go ahead and mark those in on both sides, that will help you decide like how to shape your arm. And then for the hands, like they just always kind of look a little like, um, like claws. <laughs> so don't worry about like making beautiful hands. You can go back and work on those later if you want. Then I'm coming over and I'm doing the other arm. And then once you have your arms, 
I'm going to continue to work down creating the hips. And those are going to kind of start to curve in a bit more when you get to four. Now we're going to drop down to like the knees. And so I always, just like we did for the elbow, I like to put like a little U shape or like a little sideways kind of squiggly to mark the knees. And that's going to happen at about five. And then you can go back up to about three and a half and draw like a little line for the crotch and then you're going to work your way down create to create the legs on both sides so you're going to create the first leg and then you create the second leg and we're almost done and again, don't worry too much about getting it perfect. This is our first one. And then for the feet, I just kind of do like a little flipper. And just like with the hands, you can go back later and make it pretty if you want. And now you can grab your eraser and you can start to get rid of some of those lines. So I'm erasing like the arm lines that connect to the torso and I'm going through and I'm just refining things a little bit more. And now we are going to put a dress on the croquis. The garment that was our inspirational piece was classified as a Silver War era dress, and it's from the Met Collection, and it was made in 1861. So the thing that I like to do when I start drawing a garment is I start with the neckline, because that's usually like just a really easy place to start. So this dress has just a basic scoop neck. And then I'm drawing the bell sleeves. And then the next thing that I'm drawing is the B. And this is the waistline that connects the bodice to the skirt. And then I'm drawing a little line, which is our button placard on the dress. And there were 12 or 11 buttons and you can decide how many buttons you put on it. If you want to redesign this dress a little bit, you can do it. So I'm adding my buttons using the pencil and I'll go back over them with the marker later on. And now I'm just drawing a little line to give the sleeve some dimension like kind of like a curved line and it almost makes it look like it's more of a 3d garment so it like pops off the page a little bit and it's just like a really easy trick to like make your sketches look a little more complicated and now we're going to draw the skirt the skirt is really like a triangle without the top. So if you think of it that way, it just makes it really easy to draw. And the silhouette of this dress is like a ball gown. And so we want to make sure that it flares out and then that it goes all the way to the ground. So now we have to draw the hem of the dress. And I think of it as kind of like little hills and valleys when you're doing this. Um, I don't know the secret behind drawing the hem of a dress. I just kind of like play around with it. And like, of course, you want to think about the fabric. And so this fabric is silk. 
And so just kind of thinking about the direction where just think about like the fabric and how there might be areas where it could bunch up or like there's going to be folds. And I think that will help you with figuring out how to place creases in the fabric. And so after you draw the hem, I think it's always nice once you have your, like most of it in place, you can go through and erase the legs of your croaky. So when you're coloring it, you have just a very clear palette to color on. And then I am going to erase the arms off of our croaky too. Because technically you wouldn't be able to see them anyway because they are in the garment. So I'm erasing the arms and then just going back and cleaning up some of the lines that got erased. And I'm adding more of the like pleating or like bunching up that would happen at the waist of a silk skirt. So the next thing that I'm going to do is go through and add the hash symbols. And I made myself just like a little marker, a little sample, so I can like have a general idea in my head of the sizes of these hash marks. And so the sleeves have larger hash marks and then the bodice has smaller hash marks. And then the skirt, it appears to have the same size hash marks as the sleeves. So I'm going along the sleeves and placing the larger marks. And thinking about how the garment might move on the body and how these marks might be placed in different ways. One more, and we are done adding our hash marks. And now we're going to move on to the color. Before I started, I tested out all of my markers and found the marker and colored pencil that I thought was the closest to our inspirational garment. And so now I'm going to go through and lightly color the dress. Thank you. 
this purple is a little lighter than what I hoped for, but it's close enough. So it's taking me a little extra time because I'm almost doing like two coats. And now a little trick to be able to color more area faster is just to turn your pencil to the side and then it allows you to just fill it in a little faster. So that's what I'm doing now. And now I'm coloring in the sleeve. I'm coloring in half of the bodice. And I'll probably go back over this again later to try to get it a little bit darker. But I think I'm going to get ready to grab my marker. And so now I am using the tip of the marker to go through and darken in all of the places where buttons are. And then I'm going to create the hemline. And if you'll recall, our inspirational garment had a ribbon, like a darker colored ribbon at the bottom. And so I'm going to go in and try to mimic that with my marker. And then I'm also just going to do that on what would be the back of the dress. And now I am filling in all of our hash marks. And I like this marker because it reminds me of the velvet I think they're velvet ribbons on the inspirational garment that are sewn together. So this looks almost like the same color and it just has the kind of like rich feel to it. So I think this was the perfect marker. So now I'm, um, doing the sleeve hash marks. This is so much fun in <laughs> creating prints on dresses. So now that all of my hash marks are complete, I am going to just go along and use the marker to outline the dress a bit. And, you know, this is a step that you don't really have to do. Like, I'm sure everyone has, like, their own style. Um, but I like to 
outline my drawings because I think it just makes them kind of pop a bit more and stand out. And especially since my colored pencil isn't as dark as I wanted it wanted it to be, it gives the illusion that the dress is like a little darker. And now if you have a black marker, or if you don't have a black marker, you could use a black pen or a black crayon. You can go through and kind of fill in some of those um, places where there are folds or you would imagine this silk fabric to be bunching up. And remember, fashion sketching is not about perfection. It's about being able to communicate your ideas. And I want to take her little flipper foot and kind of fashion like a boot. I guess women back then probably would have worn this dress with like a little lace up boot. And then one thing I always ask my students to do um, is give their croaky or their fashion sketch a little bit of skin tone. So here you can use whatever kind of flesh tone marker or not marker, but I would say color pencil, but you could use a marker. If you don't have a color pencil or a marker that's flesh tone, I Sometimes I've used makeup here, so you could use like a little pressed powder or if you have like a blush that's like a flesh tone, you could just put a little bit on your finger and rub it on her face. And then I, I always like to just add hair. The easiest hair is just a part down the center or off to the side and just to do like a little swoop. And then you can do a simple face with faces. It's all about the proportion. So just keep in mind that the eyes tend to fall at the center of the head and not at the top because you would create an alien, but at the center. So almost in alignment with the ears. And then you can kind of create a little bit of interest with the hair by just doing little squiggly lines with your pencil and now I'm just going back through with a different color brown pencil that's a little lighter. And I am giving her some hair color. And then I'm grabbing my red just to do like a little dot at the lip. So there's like a pop of color there. And... We are almost done. So now I'm grabbing my black marker again. And I'm just doing like a little dash for some earrings. I gave her like a little ring because fashion is all about the details. So she can have accessories or you can add like tattoos or like whatever you want to add to your fashion sketch. And then I'm just going through with my pen and adding a little more detail. I'm going to add some detail to her hair. It's looking good. And then I'm just going to keep working on this until I'm happy. I hope you enjoyed this fashion focus drop in drawing. We would love to see your designs please tag us at Met Sketch. 
Thank you so much for joining us today, and we hope to see you in two weeks for the next session of this series.